the cost of a thoughtless joke. Emily and Mark had always been the couple everyone envied. They were the kind of couple who finished each other's sentences, who had their inside jokes that no one else understood. They met in college, bonded over a mutual love for music and movies, and had been inseparable ever since. Their friends often commented on how perfect they were for each other, how their playful banter was a testament to their closeness. But as with any relationship, there were cracks beneath the surface, cracks that Emily had been too blind to notice, or perhaps too complacent to care about. Mark had always been the more sensitive of the two, wearing his heart on his sleeve, while Emily was the one who masked her emotions with humour. It was a dynamic that had worked for them for years, until one night when everything changed. It was a Friday evening, and the couple had just returned from a dinner with friends. They had been drinking, laughing, and enjoying each other's company. As they settled on the couch in their living room, Mark leaned back and sighed. It had been a long week at work, and he was looking forward to a relaxing night in. Emily, always one to keep the mood light, started teasing Mark about how much he had eaten at dinner. You know, Mark, if you keep eating like that, you'll have to buy new clothes soon, she said with a chuckle. It was a harmless comment, or so she thought. Mark smiled weakly, trying to brush it off, but Emily didn't stop there. She moved on to his hair, which had been thinning over the past couple of years. Maybe we should get you a hat collection, she joked. It'll keep your head warm and stylish. Mark's smile faded and a flicker of hurt crossed his face. But Emily was too caught up in her own amusement to notice. She continued, now poking fun at how Mark had been passed over for a promotion at work. But hey, at least you're not overworked, right? She said, laughing. That was the breaking point. Mark stood up abruptly, his face flushed with a mix of anger and humiliation. Emily, enough, he said, his voice tense. Emily, still in a playful mood, thought he was joking. Oh, come on, Mark, don't be so sensitive, I'm just messing with you. But Mark wasn't laughing. No, Emily, I'm serious, I'm tired of being the punchline of your jokes. The room fell silent. Emily blinked, taken aback by the seriousness in his tone. Mark, I didn't mean anything by it, I was just kidding. Mark shook his head his eyes filled with a hurt that Emily had never seen before. You always say that, Emily. But it doesn't feel like a joke when it's about things I'm already insecure about. Do you have any idea how it feels to hear the person you love make fun of, the things you're most self-conscious about? Emily's heart dropped. She had never meant to hurt him, but hearing his words made her realise how thoughtless she had been. Mark, I'm sorry, I didn't know... You didn't know because you never asked, Mark interrupted, his voice trembling with emotion. You never stopped to think about how your words might affect me. You just assumed I'd laugh along, because that's what I've always done. Emily felt a lump forming in her throat. Mark, I never wanted to hurt you. I love you. Mark looked at her, his expression softening slightly, but the pain was still evident in his eyes. I know you do, Emily, but love isn't just about saying the right things. It's about understanding each other, being there for each other, and not tearing each other down, even if it's unintentional. Tears welled up in Emily's eyes as she realised the gravity of the situation. She had taken Mark's feelings for granted, assuming that her jokes were harmless. But they weren't. They had been slowly chipping away at his self-esteem and now it seemed like she had pushed him too far. Mark, please, let's talk about this, Emily pleaded, reaching out to him. But Mark stepped back, shaking his head. I need some time, Emily. I need to figure out how I feel, and I can't do that here. Emily's heart sank as she watched him walk into the bedroom and start packing a bag. She wanted to stop him, to tell him that they could work it out but she knew that he needed space. For the first time in their relationship, she felt truly scared that she might lose him. Mark packed his things in silence, and when he was done, he turned to her, 
his expression sad but resolute. I'm not leaving you, Emily. I just need some time to think. I'll stay at a friend's place for a few days. Emily nodded, tears streaming down her face. I'm so sorry, Mark. Please, just come back to me when you're ready. Mark didn't say anything else. He just gave her a small, sad smile before walking out the door, leaving Emily alone in their empty apartment. The days that followed were some of the hardest Emily had ever experienced. She felt lost without Mark, her guilt consuming her every thought. She tried to busy herself with work, with seeing friends, but nothing could distract her from the ache in her chest. She called Mark several times, but he didn't pick up. The silence was deafening, and the longer it stretched on, the more terrified she became that he might never come back. Emily spent her nights lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, replaying their last conversation over and over in her head. She had never realised how much her jokes had hurt him, how deeply they had cut. She had always thought that their banter was just a part of their relationship, but now she saw how one-sided it had been. She had been using humour as a shield, deflecting from her own insecurities by focusing on his. And now, it had all come crashing down around her. After a week of no contact, Emily couldn't take it anymore. She sat down at her desk and started writing Mark a letter. She poured her heart into it, apologising for her thoughtlessness and expressing how much she loved him. She wrote about how she had never meant to hurt him and how she now understood the impact of her words. She promised that she would change, that she would be more mindful of his feelings in the future. She ended the letter by telling him that she would give him the space he needed, but that she hoped they could find a way back to each other. Two days later, there was a knock on her door. Emily's heart raced as she opened it, and there stood Mark, looking tired but calm. He held the letter in his hand. I got your letter, he said quietly. Emily nodded, her throat tight with emotion. Thank you for coming. Mark stepped inside, and they sat down on the couch, the same place where their fight had started. There was a heavy silence between them, but it wasn't uncomfortable. It was the kind of silence that comes when two people have a lot to say, but don't know where to start. Finally, Mark spoke. I've been thinking a lot about what happened, about us, and I realise that I need to work on my own insecurities. But, Emily, I also need you to understand that your words have power. I love you, and I want us to be together, but we need to communicate better. Emily's eyes filled with tears again, but this time they were tears of relief. I promise, Mark, I'll do better. I love you so much, and I don't want to lose you. Mark reached out and took her hand, squeezing it gently. I love you too, Emily. We've both made mistakes, but I believe we can get through this together. They spent the rest of the evening talking, really talking, for the first time in a long time. They opened up about their fears, their insecurities, and their hopes for the future. It was a conversation that was long overdue, and it brought them closer than they had ever been before. As they lay in bed that night, Wrapped in each other's arms, Emily felt a sense of peace she hadn't felt in days. She knew that their relationship would never be the same, but that was a good thing. They had come close to losing each other, but in the end, they had found a way back. And now, they were stronger for it. Emily made a vow to herself that night, to always be mindful of her words, to never take Mark's feelings for granted again. She knew that it wouldn't be easy, that there would be times when she would slip up, but she was determined to be the partner that Mark deserved. In the weeks that followed, they continued to work on their relationship, taking small steps every day to rebuild the trust that had been shaken. They laughed together, cried together, and most importantly, they listened to each other. Their love had been tested, but it had come out on the other side more resilient and more beautiful than before. 
and as they moved forward, hand in hand, Emily knew that they would be okay, because they had each other, and that was enough.